Hey guys, Logan here, and welcome back to a brand new video. It is the end of the transfer window, which means the saga is over. No more debate about who's coming in and out. We're grading every Premier League club on their window, and I'm joined by this mug with me. Hey, Lesser, that has been bonkers, hasn't it, Theo? I'm just getting my breath back after last night. Bloody hell. hell thought, and look at this shirt. It is beautiful. The moment football was saved. If you have one of those shirts, you are goat tier. We're going to start with the first club, which is... What do you mean, club? It's a chocolate bar called Club. Yeah. Well, we're not starting with Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal, Theo, I can't work them out. They've spent over 140 million quid, but have they got any better? Because what they've done, Theo, they've brought in young players. They've not taken the Chelsea, Man City, Man United approach. Ben White, did they overspend? Football wasn't saved for Arsenal to make these bloody signings. The highest <laughs> transfer net spend in the Premier League. And they've just brought in Lukonga, Odegaard... Some other guys called Nuno Tavares. I'm sorry, I don't know them. And the ones that I do know, they're just decent. They're okay. But when you spend the most in the Prem, you expect the best. They haven't got the best. But Theo, they've got a long-term strategy. It's buy young. Don't you respect them for doing that? There's buying young and then there's buying crap. They've not bought well. I'm sorry. I'm putting them down in uh, 14th place. There's, there are some worse transfer windows who have literally spent nothing, but... It hasn't been the best for that sort of money. Theo, I think you're being very harsh. I think Ben White is a good player. Ask any Leeds or Brighton fan. He's not 50-odd million good. He's 30 million good. Odegaard, do you not rate him? Dad, they overpaid on Ben White. They spent 30 million Odegaard. They should have gone for someone fresh who could have probably done more than how much he produced last season. It's not good enough. Where have you got them? I put them 13th because I'm not sure they've moved forward at all. Exactly. My goodness, Aston Villa now. They sold Jack Grealish for 106 million. Did they spend the money well, Theo? Emiliano Buendia, what do you think of him? Yes, but not complete. Yes, they made some good signings, but they also lost Grealish. They haven't signed a DM. And I know they've brought in the likes of Buendia, Bailey, Ings, Twanzebi, Young. Yeah, they're all solid, Dad. But will they all gel instantly? What do you reckon? Well, I reckon Danny Ings is an absolutely great signing. Three appearances, two goals, one assist. Yeah. He scored 108 career goals. If he can stay fit, Theo, he can score another 100 over the next few years. Brilliant piece of business. Leon Bailey, I tell you what, what I've seen of him, good player. Yeah, they've made some good signings, I'll agree. But it would have been complete with a holding midfielder. And they didn't get that. So I'm putting them in sixth place. Wow, I think they had to sell Jack Grealish eventually. 105 million is good business. I think they've spent it well. They could have banked that money, Theo, yeah. but they haven't. They've invested it. They're thinking we want to be mid-table. We want to get into Europe eventually. Third place. Wow. I think they've had a good window. Bloody hell, for a team that sold Grealish in a window to put them third in the Premier League, I mean... That's pretty mental. Brentford now newly promoted. And the key here, Theo, is they've not really sold anyone. They've kept Ivan Tony and Bueno Canos. They've kept the key guys and they've strengthened. I mean, Christopher Ayer, we saw him at Celtic for a few years, didn't we, Theo? Fog Dad strengthened. They barely signed anybody. And I understand what Brentford are going for. They're trying to keep the core of the squad yeah. that got them promoted from the championship. We're grading a transfer window here. I'm sorry, Brentford, 19th place. And you got them down there, haven't you? No, I tell you what, they've bought. Frank Onyeka from Michelin, which is funny. It's Matt Benham signing a cheque to himself. What they do, they've brought in three players for 10 million or more, Theo. So I think they've kept the core and they've added. I think that's very good. And the early results suggest that they're good enough to stay in this division. Where have you got them? Sixth place. Sixth place, dog. That it. I've got them in 19th. How have you got them in six? Oh, there are much worse there. I think it's very, very sensible. If they'd gone out and spent 100 million, that would have been silly. I think they'd been really, really sensible. And you know with Brentford, when they buy a player for 9 million, they know all the stats. I don't believe it. Out of all the Premier League clubs, some teams have made some great business. You've got them in sixth. Brighton and Hove Albion got 53 million for Ben White, which has got to be great business. And who've they brought in, Theo? I thought Cucurella was a very good signing. They made that one happen on deadline day. You know, they were talking about that transfer for a while with Brighton fans, so it was good to get that one done. However, the other signings, and Puemu from Salzburg for 20 million, decent. We haven't seen much of him yet. The one thing they're lacking is signing a striker. Um, they're looking pretty thin in that compartment. Absolutely, they brought in Sima from Slavia Prague, but he's gone off to Stoke on loan, Loaned really. him out, so... It's hard to call these, because these are three players who are young, and time will tell, really. It's really hard to grade it, but I'm giving Brighton points for getting a lot of money for Ben White. Fifth place. They lost out on Edward. Even worse to Palace. Yeah. And for them, that, that will hurt because they needed him, kind of, you know. So 13th place for me. Could have been better. You can understand why. 
but not the worst. Burnley of Lancashire now. <laughs> they They've... finally coughed up the cash. Maxwell Corne, and they brought in Nathan Collins, a couple of defenders. Is that good business there? And Connor Roberts, dog dad on of deadline course. day. Let's not forget that. I mean, that's good business. I'm happy to see it. Finally, Sean Dyche has been given a budget. I feel like that's put a smile on every Premier League fan ever out there. <laughs> the team with the lowest net spend finally get a little bit of a budget. I love it. It's great. And also, Corne pointing at the Umbro signing when he... <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing there? I mean, you know where the badge is. Oh, he's had a stinker, but who cares? They've signed Corne. I remember him playing in for Leon against Man City yes. when they knocked him out of the Champions League. He's at Burnley now. I just think that's unbelievable. They've got a good player to play on the wing, yeah. left-footed, get some crosses in. Good to see. I'm delighted for Burnley. They nearly won at the weekend. It was a late goal from Leeds. I've got them in 11th over their transfer window. Mid-table, but very happy for them. Absolutely. Spending 26 million on two players is massive for Burnley. Eighth place. Chelsea now. They've gone and sold Tammy Abraham, Kurt Zuma, and Tamori. Got over 90 million for those three. Wow. And they splashed it on Romelu Lukaku, Theo. And Saul. Great signing on deadline day. I think the way Chelsea operate, if they're going to do business... They're gonna do it properly. World-class signings, top names, big boys, Lukaku and Saul, nobody else. I respect that. So Chelsea, for me, are going in third place. Wow, straight to it. Now Lukaku's got 260 career goals. Wherever he goes, he gets goals. They sold him seven years ago, but he's back. And yeah. Saul, there, that's a really good signing. He's a special player, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's 27 years old, Atletico Madrid. Apparently he was in his prime for them a couple years ago. And listen, Chelsea, they've got an offer to the Premier League. I'd like to see more of him in that midfield spot. Adds depth for Chelsea. So, yeah, good signing. Yeah, he does a lot of defensive work. He's good in the air. He's a really good central midfielder. All I can say for Chelsea, second place. Wow, second and third. Pretty high up from us two. Crystal Palace were one of the oldest teams in Europe, but they've spent some money and they've spent it on youth, haven't they, Theo? Um, youth and also experience. I wouldn't argue it's all youth players at all. I think every player they've signed has proven themselves at another club in the Premier League or in the Championship. And that, that, that really is great business. We'll start with Elise, quality from the Championship. At Reading, he was outstanding. And, you know, they, it's proven to work with Eze when they bought a player from the Championship in an attacking midfield position. It's come off. Conor Gallagher, excellent. Yes. Two goals against West Ham. Quick feet. He's a midfielder, but he can also offer goals going forward. Brilliant. The two centre-backs in Anderson and Guehi both proven themselves in the Premier League. Okay, maybe Guehi more in the Championship, but I definitely think he'll be able to handle it. It's amazing business. It is brilliant. And Odson Edouard, ex-PSG, ex-Celtic, and he got a goal every other game for Celtic. He can score 20 a season if he gets used to this yeah. league. I just hope Edouard isn't a bit too lazy. You know, he doesn't like to move off the ball a little bit too much, but when he's on it, he is special. And I hope he makes the most of this transfer and it works out for him because he is a top footballer in his day, isn't he? Absolutely. And Joachim Anderson, and we know he can do it at this level. He showed that for Fulham. He is a good defender. Taking Will Hughes from a competitor. I mean, we could make a whole video yeah. on Palace's transfers. It's that long. But it's brilliant. So I'm putting them in second place. I think this is transformational. They allowed the squad to get too old. And now they're taking action at the right time. Fourth place. Everton now. And they've brought in Damari Gray for a couple of million. He's a player who didn't really work out at Leicester. He scored two goals in his first three games, Theo. Great signing in him. And I didn't expect him to do as well. So Everton are usually a club, as we know. They've got rich owners. So they do spend up to 60 and 100 million on a summer. This time round, they've barely spent anything. Don't have a backup left back. No right back. No right winger. I mean, they could have spent that money, especially coming to the latter stages of the window, and they haven't. I think it's fair to say Everton fans are fuming. Absolutely. This is a club with ambition, but suddenly are things going off the rails? New manager, no spending. You know what, Theo? 18th place. 18th? We, absolutely. They did almost nothing. That's unbelievably low. Rondon on deadline day was decent. We already spoken about Damari Gray. So for that, I bumped them up to 15th. But overall, not good enough. Leeds United, now what they've done is they've kept their manager, Marcelo Bielsa, which I think is enormous. And they've kept most of the players that they want. Yeah. And they've just brought in Daniel James there for 30 odd million quid. What do you think of that? Junior Firpo as well from Barca. Daniel James is really the one we've got to speak about because it did happen just yesterday. Um, they might have overpaid 30 million. Man United fans are, you know, doing a runner and, and taking the money <laughs> and laughing. But yeah. I do actually think Daniel James 
under Bielsa's system could work. They wanted to sign him in the championship, and there's a reason for that. They've had the opportunity to do it again, and they were successful. Absolutely, he's a good player. He's not Man United level. I think that's a very good fit. And let's not forget Jack Harrison. He's gone permanent now. He's come from Chelsea. Correct. So overall, I think Leeds have improved. And for that reason, ninth place. Yeah, I've got them in 12th. Mid-table for them. I think it was saved by Daniel James, the window. Leicester City now, and it's time for a Thog Dad fact. <laughs> The Leicester City squad is now worth more than the Arsenal squad. That's unbelievable. Isn't Talking it? about like a new top six. So they've brought in Pat Sandaka. Is he going to get any game time, Theo? Maybe. I think, you know, it's difficult with Vardy, Inacho, and all the other players around them fighting for a spot. Um, Harvey Barnes has been uh, pretty crap so far this season, and he's been in my FPL team. So <laughs> maybe they'll give new players a shot like Daka. But, you know, they did bring in Sumare. Vestergaard was another good appointment. And on deadline day, Adamola Lookman. I was there for his first ever football match in professional football at Charlton against Bolton. And I know how good he was back then and he still is incredible today. Last season for Fulham, he was brilliant in the Premier League. Great signing. The only thing is, Theo, I'm not sure if these guys are going to get much game time. So I'm a little bit underwhelmed. 14th place. What? 14th? Yeah. Thog dad, too low for me. Liverpool now and they've oh. lost Wijnaldum, haven't they? And they've brought in Canate. So really, the needle's not moved very much, has it? They've got Van Dijk back. Yeah. The year that they probably didn't need a centre-back is now. <laughs> Van Dijk and Matip are smashing it. They've just given Nat Phillips a new contract. And they're splashing the cash on another centre-back? Out of all the positions, was that the right thing to do? You lose Wijnaldum, you don't replace him? They've made no business on deadline day. One signing the whole summer. This is Liverpool Football Club. Absolutely, Theo. They are storing up problems for the future because at some point you've got to get rid of Henderson, Milner, Mane, Salah, Firmino because they're getting a year older every year. Every Absolutely. year. A club like Liverpool has got to splash 50 million on a marquee signing. Yeah. And they haven't. Last year they got Jota. This year, nobody. I worry for the future. And I'm talking when Klopp is gone. When all these big players move on. They're going to have a massive refresh in about four or five years where they're stuck with a lot of aging players on big wages who are about to leave and the youth that was meant to be coming in now and seep through in four or five years. There's none of that. There is no new signings and it does make me worry. B2 Theo, 19th. I've got them in 20th, the lowest in the table. Not good enough and I think I feel for your Liverpool fans. Manchester City have spent 106 million on Jack Grealish and they didn't buy a striker. How do you rate that? Did they really need Jack Grealish? They took a few L's this summer transfer window, let's be real. Jack Grealish, very good signing. They definitely needed him. He had squad depth on the wing. Pep Roulette, you know how it is. He's already gained contributions for the club. And I think that'll be a very good signing. However, no striker. No Harry Kane. No Cristiano. They lost out on both of them. I reckon you shouldn't overpay. They could have got Harry Kane if they'd given stupid money to Daniel Levy. Mm. And I think they were quite clever saying, no, okay, we'll come back next year or in two years. So I'm actually going to rate Man City quite high. Jack Grealish is an excellent player. Now, you could argue they might have strengthened in the defence, kind of at left back, for example. And overall, I think... A fair place to put City for their window is 7th. Yes, and I completely agree, 7th. Oh wow, you agree with me. Manchester United now, Varane, Sancho and some Portuguese guy whose name I've forgotten for you. Brilliant, round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause for everybody in the Manchester United Football Club Association that were to do these transfers. Great business. You've got my first place, okay? It's not even a question. It's your first place as well. No, did they? No, 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 no. Did they really need Cristiano Ronaldo? Dad, it's Cristiano Ronaldo. The money he makes back from shirt sales alone makes this deal worth it. And plus, it's Cristiano. If you get the opportunity to sign him, you buy it. But Theo, they don't have a proper defensive midfielder. I agree. That is something they missed out on. It would have made it the perfect transfer window if they got a holding mid. You've got Sancho Varane and Ronaldo. You can live with playing Scott McTominay in there for a bit. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Cristiano Ronaldo, five Ballon d'Ors, five Champions League, seven league title. He is the GOAT, possibly, of all time. And for that reason, first place. Exactly. Thought that. <laughs> Listen, they spent less than Arsenal. I know. And they brought everybody in that we've already mentioned. Fair play to Man United. We agree on first. Let us know in the comments if you agree with us. Newcastle United now. Fantasy Premier League managers will be very happy because Joe Willock is now permanent, isn't he, Theo? He is, but nobody else. Yeah. I Santiago guess. Munez. Oh, brilliant. He he sounds like the guy from the film Goal. Great. Haha. <laughs> no other business. No other business. Newcastle fans should be worried. They're looking to survive and improve their football club. They haven't won yet. The only draw they got was to Southampton at home. That is a winnable game. 
They needed new signings and they didn't bring him in. Theo, Mike Ashley wants to stay up and then sell the club. That's all he cares about. So yeah. uh, if I was a Newcastle fan, I'd be very disappointed. 16th place. I think they need a little bit lower than that, Thogdad. 18th. Some serious money should have been spent to guarantee they survive. Hasn't been done. Norwich City now. They got 36 million for Buendia, their best player. And they splash 60 million quid on about nine players. From Bundesliga 2, from the Greek lead, from Russia. Theo, what's going on here? Hey, that lad from the Greek lead scored two against Bournemouth. Not yeah. a bad player. But overall, Norwich. Billy Gilmore. Yeah. Wonder more, as Chelsea fans call him. He is a good midfielder. And I think that was a good appointment. Rashika. Yeah. The Kosovan legend. Lise Malou. Kabak on deadline day. Definitely some good appointments there. Strengthened, but when you sign that many players, we've seen it before with Norwich. They're a yo-yo club. They once signed a whole new team and got relegated. Yeah. Will it happen? Theo, this is like a supermarket trolley dash. It reminds me of what Fulham did a few years ago. Yeah. I think it probably won't work. I think Norwich will be relegated 19th or 20th, but at least they're trying something. I agree. At least they're trying and they're signing quality players. Kabak was at Liverpool last yes, year yes. and they've signed him. So fair enough. I'm going to put them in 10th place. I'm going to put them 12th because at least they're having a go. We sort of agree there. Southampton now. They sold Yannick Vestergaard. They sold Danny Ings. They've actually got a net income of about 20 million quid, Theo. Brought in Adam Armstrong. I think the team has been weakened. Amazing. What, weakened? Yeah. Well, they did make 25 million profit from this transfer window and they brought in Breuer. Adam Armstrong, Livermento, Walcott. They're not bad appointments. I know they lost uh, the likes of Danny Ings and Vestergaard. Overall, they probably weakened a little bit, but they did make 25 million. And that is something that I have to add up into this video. Profitable net spend. So for Southampton, I've got them in eighth place. Theo, if they get relegated, it's not profitable. I That's think you're true. you're wrong there. I think Southampton are looking to the future. Adam Armstrong is younger than Danny Ings. Yeah. That's why they've gone for it. Yeah, Adam Armstrong, a good player, 111 career goals, but it's a risk because he's got no Premier League experience. Overall, Theo, I'm going to say 17. Tottenham Hotspur now, and they've managed to hold on to Harry Kane, which is the first thing to mention. Emerson Royale. Now, he's only played three times for Barcelona, but he's played a lot more for Real Betis. And this is a really attacking right-back, Theo. Good player. They brought in Romero from Atalanta, a quality centre-back from the Serie A. Argentina have been dying for a quality centre-half for so long, and they've got that as well, and so do Spurs. They've also been begging for it. Let's not forget Gil, the youth signing. Yeah. I think there's a lot of potential there, but most importantly, Kane is staying at Tottenham Hotspur. And that, in itself, makes this a good transfer window. I'm putting them very high in fourth place. Wow, that is very generous. Overall, I put them 10th. Maybe I've been a bit harsh. Fuck that, 10th! Kane alone should bump it up to top five. <laughs> and now for newly promoted Watford, the club of Sir Elton John. They need to spend money to stay up, and they've spent four million quid. They've lost Nathaniel Chalaba. Domingos Quina, by the way, both to the same club, Fulham, madness. And Will Hughes. Watford's outgoings have not been what they've wanted to be, let's be honest. They've brought in Sissoko, that brings experience. We know him from Newcastle and from Tottenham Hotspur. Josh King has come in, but is he a bit past it? We'll find out. There's a lot of incomings yeah. um, from many different parts of the world. Overall, it's going to be difficult for them all to gel, especially when you take out the core of the squad. I think Watford are going down. I'm sorry, Ben Foster. 16th overall for their window. Watford are going down all day long, 20th. West Ham United have splashed the cash on Kurt Zuma, very experienced from Chelsea. That's pretty good. But did they overpay, Theo? If he comes off his great business, West Ham have been smashing it lately. Alex Crowd through the door, a lad from Czech Republic. No surprises there. Vlasic, the Croatian... Yeah. Also from the Russian League, a lot to come from him. Absolutely, got a lot of contributions for CSK in the Russian League, a good player. But the biggest loss for West Ham, and this was terrible, they lost Dapo Afalayan to Bolton Wanderers. Hey, 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 what By the a way, player. he scored the winner last night to make it 3-2 against Portfire. What a comeback, get in there! <laughs> Up the Bolton, I've weighed it down. It probably would have been first place if they didn't lose such a baller in Dapo. <laughs> Fifth place for West Ham. And I put them 11th. Fuck that, you put them 11th? Theo. Ariola through the door. Vlasic, quality player in the Russian League. Very good stats. They've made some good signings. Theo, they've got into Europe. I just think they could have done more. Really? Ah, to be honest, all I can think... You're a mug. That's all I can think. Move on to the next club. And finally, Wolverhampton Wanderers have made a transfer profit of five million quid. Now, they brought in the lad Trincao. And I tell you what, Wolves have lost three out of three, but they looked quite good in two of those games. Dad, no serious business. The Wolves fans are fuming. I know they signed Huang Ki Chan and he once sent Van Dyke 
to the shops where he basically did his ankles in and scored for Salzburg. But forget that. His stats for his own club aren't that great. Yeah. And overall, they've not made a quality signing, Wolves. They've got to be down there for me. 17th. Wow, it'd be interesting to see how Huang does. Because like you said, Theo, he gets a goal every three games. That's mm. not exactly setting the world on fire, is it? But he's a big game player from what I've yeah. seen of him live. And I thought he was excellent. But overall, where you've got him? I put them 15th. I expected mm. more from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Yeah, low down. We agree on that. And it is the end of the video. Thank Thank you very much for watching this video. Let us know the worst club for the transfer window and the best club. Any final words? See ya.